Recording is re rolling. Uh, let's, let's do let's do some hints on this thing. All right, so uh, I'm looking at maybe like three parts. Right, there's this blue base uh, with, with a couple of axles uh, uh, poking through. There's see this green gear. Now the green gear you guys are going to hand power, and that should automatically cause the uh, the, the red gear to move incrementally. Right. Hmm. All right, so. Uh, Let's look at this uh, this green gear here. Uh, I'm thinking, what are some some aspects to this? Well, okay, I see some do with like an axis system. Uh, I see some do with this peg that's moving around, and that peg is catching the teeth of the red gear and forcing that to move. Uh, ooh, do you guys see any part of that green gear in this animation that's not really necessary from an engineering point of view? Ah, uh, yeah. How, how about this this crescent moon part? Do you guys have to build a crescent moon? That's, that's not really doing anything, is it? Uh, now, I, I do have a speculation why the animator included that, that crescent moon part. But why do you think the animator included the crescent moon? Uh, yeah, so you can see it's all one solid teeth moving. Because here, I'm, I'm thinking if that crescent moon was not there, then it might look like there's just a peg that's like floating around versus if you include the crescent moon, you can very clearly see, ah, yeah, that is one solid piece that's all moving together, right? One solid disc. Uh, now, let's go over to the to the red gear. Now, they have six teeth on the red gear. Uh, I, I don't care if you have six or different from six. I, I have a model with eight, so I'll show you guys that here in a moment. Uh, so do you guys see that as that green peg leaves this space in the teeth, that the, the next space in the teeth is automatically set up to accept the peg. Ah, so, so, so it looks like there, there's like some uh, angle between like each set of teeth on the red gear that's constant all the way around. So like if you vary that angle, if you have like teeth really close together and then far apart, well, it's it's not gonna set up to accept the peg next go around, right? Okay, so, so you do want equal spacing of teeth. Uh, and one way to get an equal uh, spacing of all right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, oh, I bet you could take the protractor and take 360 degrees, divide by the number of teeth. That might give you an even, even spacing. Uh, one trick is, see how if you have an even number of teeth, that there's always one tooth exactly opposite of the other? Like, you could take a ruler, and it always goes through that uh, that central axis. Is that? Hmm. Okay, so those are all, uh, all, all hints. Oh, uh, let's switch back over to projector, and I'll show you guys my version of this. All right. Oh, look at that! I got uh, the piece of got hand power. Got these teeth here. Right. <coughs> it's a little different from the animation, but look at that! So you continuously hand power this one, and um, this guy over here with the teeth will turn incrementally. Look at that! Oh yeah. Right. Uh, now. What's going on underneath here so, so this can spin? Like, how, how are the axle systems working? Because they got the handle here. They got got these pegs that are catching these teeth. Hey, let me pull this thing apart. Uh, pull this guy off. Ooh, look at that. You guys see an axle system? So it's just fit here. Yeah, look at that. So maybe two cylinders, uh, different diameters. Hey, one can fit into the other. Hey, now, let's take a look at the other one. So look at that. So it's, it's loose enough where it'll move, but it's uh, tight enough. It's not going to be all wobbly and fall over. Hey, that's it. Happy medium, and it's pulled apart. Ah, same thing. So a couple of cylinders, uh, different diameters, uh, big, right? Like optimal difference in, in sizes. Uh, what else? Ooh, how about this? Uh, if I turn this up like this, ah, do you guys see that one of these is taller than the other? Right, got a tall guy here and a short guy here. Is that? Now, what? Why would I uh, make one tall and one short? Huh. Well, I put this all back together. So this guy pops on the short guy. This guy pops on the tall guy. Ah, because you see how the pegs are like reaching up from underneath. Okay, so so that can help that. Right? Oh, and actually, there's one last hint that I for sure want to give you guys, which is uh, how to attach uh, cylinders. So since you guys have been working with the glue for a while now. Uh, What's gonna be easier to glue? And edge to a surface like this, edge to surface, or if you have a surface to surface connection? 
definitely, right? Because edge to surface, that might take a few hours to dry, right? But surface to surface, that'll take a few seconds to dry, right? Maybe like 10 or 20 seconds, just press it, hold it for about 10 seconds. Okay. Long, right? So with that in mind, uh, let's look at how the maybe these pegs or those uh, axle cylinders were connected to the uh, the gear surfaces. Okay. Here, close apart again. Uh, ooh, let's get close up here. So we got the cylinder, we got the surface. Ah, do you guys see like, like feet on this thing? Okay, so see if, what you can do is you can take a rectangle, you can roll it up into a cylinder. But if you take this cylinder and glue it directly to a surface, see how that would be like an edge to surface connection? That's going to take like, you know, like a couple hours to dry. Right. But if you cut some feet, snip, 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 spread these feet out. Oh, look at that. You got that glue, 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 glue. Guys, nice surface to surface connection right there. And that'll dry really fast. Okay, get to that. All right, so you guys think you can put this all together now? All right, so I'm going to close down this recording. And uh, remember, this is a two day project. So you guys get rested today and tomorrow with your teammates. <laughs>